If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Sir, oh. could you take a look at this, please? What is it now, Hicks? I'm detecting extremely hot incoming levels. How hot? Super hot. Like the video game? No, sir. As in, too hot for broadcast television standards level of hot. Well, we're delivering for the internet. What's the standard for the internet? In that case, there are no standards, sir. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you all the tips for making great video. Frank and I have got a bunch of things uh, in the fire, so to speak. We've got some scripts written. We've got some casting to be done. We've got a bunch of things working. So in the meantime, you're stuck with me, but I'm going to give some more audio tips for people using Premiere Pro for some things that you probably haven't seen that could help you in your next project. I am looking at currently the, uh, we're back to Brad and Jennifer, and I love these two, these two. If you uh, want to check out this video on uh, directing actors, please check the link in the description below. But today my focus is on tools that you may or may not know about that could help you. And one of those tools is called the loudness radar. So when I mixed this uh, particular thing, there's a lot of tracks in here. There's three tracks of vocals, there's a uh, music track, some stings, drums, there's all kinds of neat stuff. First things first though, if we take a look at our screen, I have got my audio track mixer set up here. And these are all the tracks that I put effects on for the Brad and Jennifer sketch. Uh, so each of these lines represents a track. And as you can see, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate for using the audio track mixer as opposed to adding effects to clips. You add effect to a clip if you want it specifically for that clip. But if you're going to put some effects on a track, then all the things on all the clips on that track will uh, abide by those clips or by those effects. So I have a multiband compressor here on James. I have some other things happening on Courtney's track. I have some other things happening on uh, Jennifer's track. And then some stuff for the audio effects and everything has its own level. Great. Now this guy right here is the master track. And it's usually represented down below, way down here, called master. All right, so the master track is your final output, your final point of, of, of output for your audio. This is where we're gonna put our loudness radar. Now you, you can put the loudness radar on individual tracks. Uh, I think you can even put the loudness radar on a single clip. But in this case, I want the loudness radar to tell me the overall average um, volume of my entire, my entire sketch. So I'm gonna come up to this little guy and I'm going to click special loudness radar. And there it is. Now it doesn't do much when you add it because uh, you're not looking at it yet. So let's double click it. Boom, there we go. This is the loudness radar in Adobe Premiere. And I heard this was licensed from TC Electronic. What are we looking at? Why are we here? What's going on? Well, like I said, I wanna measure, I wanna be able to tell the place I'm delivering my file to, uh, be it television, uh, European, uh, CD, the web, if it complies by the standards. Now, the only people that set up a standard right now, realistically, is the broadcast uh, community. That's why the uh, loudness radar is even here. The bro broadcast community set up a standard for volume output for broadcast TV. So you ever sat and watched a television show and then a commercial came on and it blew your ears out of the water? It's adventurous in the world of digital. They set this standard so that you, your maximum volume level should not exceed what they set. And they, particular, they set 24, negative 24. Now this is LUFS, which is loudness, loudness units relative to full scale. Okay, it's not decibels, it's not dB. This is different. So in this little pick box up here, when you start up the loudness radar, you're already set to what's called uh, broadcast standards, which is 24, negative 24 LUFS. 
Um, there are also these other settings here, which is CD master. If you want to make sure that your, um, that your levels are CD ready, even though that's still kind of the wild west, like there is really no standard for CDs. Some CDs are just boom, point, what is it? Negative 0.01 to zero dB just means it's the loudest as it possibly can be. Because let's face it, loud and in your face is the way people usually record now. Even television shows on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, loud and in your face is the way to go. So anyway, there are all these presets here, but let's take a look at our current settings. Our current settings are set to broadcast, which is negative 24. Radar speed and all this other stuff. You don't really need to know what any of these things do. But what I'm going to show you right now is when I start my video, I'm going to start it from here. Uh, let's find out what the radar does. Close up shot of Brad establishes focus for the scene and establishes my importance. Cut to a medium shot, this time with the camera at waist. Okay, so that's enough. So as you can see, it's starting to paint this kind of radar screen on. It's trying it's starting to paint what is the 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 average volume, the average uh, level of my scene as it goes by. Now, I'm going to reset this with this little reset button. I'm going to go to the settings, and I'm going to set up uh, what I want to uh, monitor. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to broadcast, so I'm not going to set it to negative 24. I do want to go to the web, which in general will be anywhere between negative 20 and negative 16. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it a negative 16 right now, just so you can see a big difference. There is no standard for the web. Just blast the people's ears if you want. Sometimes it's also good to set to a level of say me maybe little speakers on on your on your computer those little speakers on your mac or whatever you want to mix you actually want to listen to your mix on something like that because most people will be listening to that if they're not listening to cans okay negative 16 we're going to say negative 16 negative 16 to 20 is around the right range i'm going to set this radar speed to one minute which means the radar will go around once every minute so this is kind of zero, this is 15, this is 30, this is 45, back to zero. So for every minute, I get one full revolution of the radar. And the only other, other thing you need to really pay attention to is this line right here, the second line out from the end. So there's, there's the top line. The second line out is sort of like the skin tone line from our vector scope um, video. And we'll leave a link in the description for that too. This is the line you want to look at because this is where your signal should be uh, hitting. This second line here, okay? Now, around this ring, I'm going to I'm going to play it a little bit. Around this ring is going to give us our immediate levels, and in this section of the screen, you're going to see the average level. So let's just play it for now. This up shot of Brad establishes focus for the scene and establishes my importance. Cut to a medium shot, this time with the camera at waist height as a new character. All right. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in pretty good shape already. Um, my levels are showing at peaking somewhere near this line here. My average is negative 17, so that's in the ballpark of where I want to be for web. So I'm all set. Now... Here's the question. When I use this thing, what happens if my levels are not where they need to be? Uh-oh. Oh, no. So what you can do is, I'm going to close this for a second. The master track. The master track. When we talk about the master track, the master track is where you're going. Now, you're not going to drag clip. You can't drag clips. Woo! You can't drag clips to the master track. All the master track is an output. But you can add effects. And that's what I did. I added the loudness radar as the final effect on the master track. And it's important to remember, these all get applied in order. So as you stack your effects, they are getting applied one at a time, top down. Same way as your effects in your effect controls, right? Same way as in your video, when you apply one thing and the next, and the, it's all hierarchy. So first, next, next, next. The reason I tell you this is I'm going to put the loudness radar on the bottom because I want all the effects to happen on top of it. Then I want to hear the loudness radar. So what I could do is I could add some, if I wanted to fix 
a really loud level or something that's really crazy, first thing I would do is probably go back to the mix. I'd probably go back to uh, my individual tracks and make sure they're set and make sure that those levels aren't peaking. And once I hit this stage, I could add, um, under amplitude, amplitude and compression, I can add a multi-band compressor, okay? And just simple as this, if I add the multi-band compressor and I'm set to output gain here, and remember this little guy right here shows you the current, one of the dials, <laughs> the currently selected uh, control on that effect. You only get one for free. To get the rest, you have to double click to see the entire interface. But with multiband compressor selected, I get one here. I can choose whichever one of these things I wanna use. But right now it's output gain, which is fine because that's what I wanna use, output gain. So with the loudness radar up, I'm gonna hit reset and I'm gonna press play. Let me go back to multiband compressor. Output gain, there we go. I'm gonna press play. Now let's say I wanted it to be at you know, let's reset this to uh, 24. Let's reset this back to be web, okay? So web means, ah, uh, sorry, not web, broadcast. Because so broadcast means negative 24 LFS or LKFS. I'm gonna press play here. Uh, oh, one thing I wanna show you actually is on the timeline, I'm gonna set an in and out point. Usually what I'll do is I'll loop the audio so I can listen to certain sections and make sure that they sound okay. To do that, I'm gonna make sure the timeline is selected Hit I for in point, and I'm gonna do this whole section. O for the out point, okay? So now I've selected, which you've probably done before, but I want to loop this. I wanna make sure it's looped. So on my program monitor right here, I have a loop button selected. How did I get that? If you go to your little plus button on your program monitor, you bring up your button editor. And all there are a lot of buttons Maybe not enough space for all of them. That's why they didn't put them, but there are a lot of buttons available. The loop button is one that's available. You just drag it down and hit OK. Now I have this loop option. I can enable it. And now watch what happens when this, when I press play and it reaches the end of this clip. Cut to a medium shot. Starts over. Really nice feature, useful in using audio, okay? Let's take a listen. This time with the camera at waist height as a... Well, I can already tell. The peak level has hit, said it's peaking and it's like fully blasted out. So I can take the output gain and I'm gonna do this in real time. Let's reset this. I can set the output gain and bring it down as I listen just to make sure that I can bring it within its negative 24. Let's take a Cut look. to a medium shot. This time with the camera at waist height as a new character. Cut to a medium shot, this time with the camera at waist height as a new character. All right, so notice it got really small, it got smaller and smaller and smaller. So you can actually monitor and change it in real time to make sure that your levels meet whatever requirements. Once again, broadcast has a requirement of negative 24. Um, there's EBU requirements. Uh, it's not really a requirement for CD mastering, but I don't think you're going to be doing CD mastering in Premiere. You might want to do that in Audition. Anyway, that's about it. So remember, your master track is where is your final output. You can actually add effects to that master track. I chose the loudness radar because no one seems to know about it, and it's a really handy tool to uh, measure your output and make sure that you're, you're, um, you're within limits of wherever you're trying to deliver. You can add all kinds of other effects. I think you can only add up to five, right, on that master track. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out pullmyfocus.tv for all our articles and companion videos. Switch that. Also, if you like what we're doing and you want to support us in any way, shape, or form, maybe support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash pullmyfocus where you can, for as little as a dollar, help us continue to bring you these great videos about making video. So that's just a little bit about uh, the master track and the loudness radar. And if you're ever sitting around wondering, hmm, wouldn't it be great if I could just maybe get in touch with Manu or Frank and talk to them about a particular problem that I'm having? Well, you can. 
Just go to our website, pullmyfocus.tv, and you can actually book a session with myself about anything, about premiere, about audition, about stuff like that, or with Frank about filmmaking and lights and whatever problems you're having on set. And you can schedule a chat with one of us. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.